competition for outright automotive craptacularity remains intense, but it seems the coveted brown medal for customer service excellent is still comfortably in the bag. So move over, Ford, Mercedes-Benz, Volkswagen and LDV. As Sean Connery said so apocryphally in Highlander, the first one, there can be only one. I'm John the Dugan from AutoExpert.com.au. New cars cheap, but Australia only. Website. Card. Jeep sales here in Australia have taken the most fragrant dump. <laughs> Dead centre in the silk sheets. High up too in the presidential suite. It's carnage up there, dude. They've fallen spectacularly from a lofty 30,408 sales 10 years ago in 2014 to just 4,634 sales last year. That's only 85% down. And yet, the carnage continues. Jeep sales here currently on track if that's the right word, to be even worse this year, which must make for some dead set, interesting, uplifting, and of course, spiritually fulfilling conference calls back to head office in Auburn Hills at the end of each month. Perhaps they should sell tickets to that. It's one broadcast to which I, for one, would pay handsomely for a season pass, as long as it was uncensored. Now, why has this occurred? I would argue two reasons. Reliability is appalling, and they are such complete anti-consumer scoundrels about it. Scoundrels! They're worse even than Satan's car maker, Three Prong. No reference to individuals is made throughout this report, obviously. I'm just talking about corporate conduct. Now, this hilarious consumer law case here out of Queensland makes excellent reading if you find yourself thinking, however erroneously in a moment of weakness, that owning a Jeep might be a grand idea for your next outback adventure. Grab a fresh pair of incontinence briefs, dude. We're going to be deep diving into that official hilarious judgment next and... Fair warning, there could easily be leakage. This video is brought to you by the Manscaped Beard and Balls Bundle. A fairly self-explanatory concept, except of course to Picasso. This is the perfect bundle for your face and below the waist. This is the Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra, not your average trimmer. This thing is a powerhouse with two interchangeable blade heads. The trimmer blade is tough on hair, but gentle on your skin. This thing is a bit of a one-pass wonder. It's tough, smooth, and durable, kinda like me. But then, when you wanna get serious about minimizing the coefficient of friction, you simply snap in the foil blade and get to work. The foil blade, such a neat, smooth finish, people will notice in a good way. You also get three different comb options to customize designer stubble. Anything from a fairly tight 1.4 millimeters up to a far more relaxed 12 millimeters for, I don't know, holidays. Plus there's a bicolor LED spotlight and a travel lock to prevent accidental in-bag activation. The Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra is simply the perfect tool for this demanding job. The Beard Hedger now a perfect companion for going full Michelangelo on your facial hair. Titanium coated stainless steel T-blade with 20 different length settings that you achieve effortlessly with the zoom wheel so any look is possible from tight designer stubble to the full-blown ZZ Top masterpiece. Both the Beard Hedger and the Lawn Mower 5.0 are waterproof so you can take care of business wholly in the shower and therefore clean up is a breeze. There are no cords, they're both USB-C rechargeable, each with up to 60 minutes of runtime 
per charge. And the LED battery indicator lets you know exactly where you stand there. The Manscaped Beard and Balls Bundle featuring the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra and the Beard Hedger. It's time to forget about swinging through the trees like your ancestors and face the future with your grooming under complete control. Bundle up at manscaped.com slash autoexpert. Now you'll get 20% off plus free international shipping with promo code AEJC at checkout. That's 20% off plus free shipping with promo code AEJC at manscaped.com slash autoexpert. Manscaped, your balls will thank you. On March the 1st of 2023, after suffering roughly 15 long months of terminal Jeep Compass Trailhawk number twos, our hero in this saga, a chap named Dallas Hawkins, had his cup o' oh crap just runneth over and he filed an official complaint with QCAT, the Queensland Consumer Comedy Club. Fourteen side-splitting months after that, QCAT issued the dealer a gold-plated and diamante-encrusted barbed wire enema. In the form of an order to refund DH, the $60,599.99 purchase price, plus a little extra on the side for damages, which was nice. The recipient of, let's call it, um... Liberace's enema was Keystar Redcliffe Jeep in Kipper Ring. And I do apologise if you're watching from overseas because Australian place names make absolutely no sense. Not to us, although we are inured to it, but certainly not to you. And my best advice, should you visit, is don't even try to understand them. Keystar is, of course, part of the Trevette dealership Death Star. And the second respondent in this saga was the Galactic, em Galactic Empire, get it right, of consumer ankle grabbing itself, Stellantis Shitsville. <coughs> DH and presumably his lovely wife could have travelled to a civilised country, five star all the way, and went there, eaten nothing but braised zebra washed down with verve for that kind of coin, frankly. But instead, go figure, they opted to participate in a tag-along tour through the fly-blown Victorian high country in their seven-slot poo-slinging chariot, which predictably went full in trow in the corner penthouse of nowhere central outside of mobile range Yes, just on day three of their saga. After stopping to take photographs for about ten minutes, it was a gorgeous overcast day and the sleet was only intermittent. That was keeping the flies at bay. The Jeep's shitbox, upon restart, would not release its death grip on the parking brake. And that's always a problem. Gears could not be selected either. And there was a severe clunk when any of this was attempted. Like, you want to go out of park? I don't think so. Hill hold was also locked on. So there was a concerted effort not to proceed by the vehicle for some malicious reason. Who knows? Adventures don't actually get more intense than that. Unless, of course, you take that five-star holiday with the cheerleaders' mommies. That can get pretty intense from time to time. DH, in this predicament, tried pressing Control-Alt-Delete quite a few times, all to no avail. As the official judgment actually records it, the vehicle was completely inoperable and immobile. Well, that's kind of unequivocal, isn't it? It was both of those things. It was the Jeep equivalent of an ex-parrot. Suddenly, I suppose, that brazed zebra served on a bed of string bikini with a magnum of verve, was looking pretty good. But then, does it ever not? Fortunately, the beard-stroking, crock-tooth hat-wearing superhero who was running the tag-along tour came to the rescue with his mighty scan tool. Mercy sakes alive, he's obviously kind of used to having Jeeps and Land Rovers in his convoy. 
pretty clearly. So he put the hammer down on that mighty scan tool, cleared the codes, and DH was again mobile and free to roam through the majestic, fly-blown, intermittent high country sleet. So isn't that excellent? Short-lived, though. The problem recurred, hilariously, the very next day. It was a carbon copy, almost. Only this time, the scan tool revealed nine uplifting, extra side-splitting faults. And when the vehicle restarted, six more faults came to light, just for good measure. It was fault code o'clock up there in the high country. And I think any sane person who had just parted with all that coin would be leaking in their jocks right about then. And there would be no shame. But at least you would not be alone. That legendary Jeep engineering. So, DH and lovely bride, they boned their tour, their once-in-a-lifetime tour of the fly-blown high country. This cost them a considerable amount, obviously, and they called Jeep roadside assist, which sounds grand, but down there, it's really just the RACV wearing a wig and different lippy. Unable to diagnose anything, helpfully suggesting a visit to the dealership. Thanks a lot. The two nearest dealers, Wangaratta, see earlier, absurd place name disclaimer, and Shepparton, beautiful Shepparton, both more than 100 k's away in a legendary but randomly failing seven-slot shitbox. Both dealers helpfully advising D.H., that they had no ability to help him for at least a week, to which I'm sure he retorted, thanks so much. That ironclad National Jeep Support Network, coupled to that mighty can-do attitude. So, Mr and Mrs DH decide to live life on the edge and head back to Queensland, and they made it almost as far as Wodonga ridiculous place name disclaimer. When the RACV in drag was again required mainly due to the severe clunking but also the dashboard full of engaging disco lights. Play that funky full code white boy. Again no diagnosis was possible but helpfully suggesting a visit to the closest absurd named Jeep dealership. Yes. So Blacklock's Jeep in Wodonga and I have no idea how many place names end in Donga down under, but I do double dead dingoes Donga dare you to let me know in the comments. Dude, what do you think it is? Anyway, Donga's dealership helpfully advised DH that they couldn't possibly fit him in for at least a week, but they did manage to charge him just 80 bucks to plug in their scan tool quickly and print out a list of the shit boxes. 11 most current faults. Thanks very much. Now, I think you'd agree. Nothing says total support commitment quite like, we can't help you for at least a week, but please accept this bill for 80 bucks as a token of our abject assholery for printing out the faults on your vehicle, which is only a few months old and with fewer than 20,000 Ks on the clock. We've got you covered, dude. No workers. Kindly don't let the door hit you on the arse on the way back to Queensland. Being stung for the 80 bucks, you know, it's really the glacé cherry on the icing of this cake, isn't it? And it must have lodged deep in DH's anus, metaphorically, on principle, because he did successfully claim that sum in the damages. And Stellantis Schittsville, meaning Jeep, steadfastly refused to entertain any possibility of ever reimbursing it until it was not optional, because clearly they are quite desensitised to such highfalutin concepts as, I don't know, right or wrong. In relation to the $80 service cost from Blacklock's Jeep, the response from the second respondent and their continual refusal to reimburse this cost over the past two and a half years presents as unreasonable and 
mean-spirited. Stellantis Shitsville, i.e. Jeep, is the second respondent named throughout this document, bravely prepared there to sacrifice what little remains of its reputation over much less than the bill for the in-cake stripper at my last birthday party. Number 62, it was a big one, we splurged. And she was a very nice lady too, I must confess, doing a job she clearly loved, deeply committed. She went above and beyond. Well done, I said. You go, girl. Unreasonable and mean-spirited. Stick that in your frickin' trust pilot and smoke it, Jeep Shitsville. Because that's not, I don't know, Redman456 in the comments with all the credibility traditionally attached to a fake name nobody having a bit of a spray. That is an official determination by a member of the Queensland Civil and Administrative Tribunal. Mean-spirited. I note they never use words such as fuckheads, these members, but doubtless it must be so tempting at times. Back in beautiful Queensland, DH managed to inflict his fine but only vestigially serviceable off-road abomination on his dealer, who kept the vehicle for a week, but couldn't replicate the fault, suggesting at the end of all of this that it might be the CAN bus or the windscreen calibration or DH driving two-footed causing a brake accelerator concurrence fault. Which is, when you think about it, that's the exact freaking opposite of doing actual diagnosis. They diligently tried replicating that fault. They went all the way out to a divot out the back of the local footy field, all to no avail, because obviously it was the great dividing fucking ranges. Day off in Queensland that day. Such a world-class effort to get to the bottom of this problem and sort things out once and for all. This has resulted in the vehicle being off-road due to investigation or repairs for 27 days in a five-month period between October 2022 and March 2023. And in this time, the applicant has made 21 calls to Jeep customer services and 10 calls to the second respondent, all of which went to answering machines and none of which were ever returned. More award-winning QCAT comedy gold right there. Doubtless that's what off-road actually means when you buy a Jeep. Parked out the back of the service department for a bit more head-scratching. Furthermore, nothing, I would argue, screams, I really, really value our relationship. Quite as loud as 31 calls, all diverting to voicemail, and none of which ever get returned. And I've had five ex-wives, dude, so I speak with considerable authority on the issue of being ghosted. Nothing screams we're a serious business, customer-centric, quite like a computer answering the customer support hotline. And 27 days off the road in five months, clearly that's not anything like a record for a Jeep, but still, solid effort. Well done. Consumers are entitled to expect that a brand new vehicle will reliably work for several years and will safely get them to and from wherever they are going without leaving them stranded on the side of the road or in a remote bush or trail location. This is even more important for a four-wheel drive vehicle marketed as a trail or off-road vehicle, which are often driven in more remote locations with limited phone reception and on more rugged terrain, which is not always accessible to a tow truck. So this is what QCAT said the guarantee of acceptable quality actually means, at least in part. And it gobsmacks me that A, median customer support in the car industry is so shit in Australia that just picking up the pieces and fixing stuff and looking after people when something fails, i.e. doing the minimum required for legal compliance, is what masquerades as excellence in automotive businesses in Australia. And B, some companies like Stellantis Shitsville pretty clearly are seemingly prepared to trash their reputations by fighting to the death to avoid looking after a customer who presents with 
totally legitimate concerns. They do this to an extent and with such zeal that it blinds them to the reputational damage that flows from having independent determinations such as this one from the QCAT imposed upon them in public and then amplified, heaven forbid, by evil geriatric bastards on YouTube who apparently love just satirising the shit out of miscreant corporate bullies who comport themselves like this. In addition to the issues arising in the Victorian high country, the tribunal also finds that the combination of the other faults with the vehicle in terms of the stop-start error, the faulty battery requiring replacement within 12 months, the brake accelerator coherence fault, the navigation issues and the failing alternator which required replacing within 18 months meet the standard of a major defect as no reasonable consumer fully acquainted with the nature and extent of the multiple issues with this motor vehicle would have purchased it. Aside from being an hilarious and brief summary validating the position that DH's compass is more automotive abomination than not, this is kind of an important consideration legally, something on which the acceptable quality consumer guarantee hinges. Like... Would you have bought this car if we had slaughtered a goat just beforehand and its entrails had told you that this is what you would have to look forward to? Probably not. So I think the funniest part of this judgment all up, the bit most likely to interfere with your bladder control, so perhaps just take a moment to check the integrity of the seals on your incontinence underwear, won't you? There's a good chap would be this next bit, straight from the gob of Jeep's Oracle, their independent technical expert who testified at QCAT named Mr. Robert, and presumably he said this on cross-examination concerning his QCAT assessment of DH's shitbox. Mr. Robert, the expert for the second respondent, conceded this issue at hearing, stating he would not want to buy the vehicle if he knew of all the issues it would have, and stated... Quote, if you knew any of those concerns would happen with any manufacturer, you wouldn't buy that vehicle. No one would buy that vehicle. One can tell that one is looking at an unmitigated, abject automotive shitbox when the expert, which the car maker, in this case Stellantis Shitsville, is paying to be there for them, concedes to the court that, quote, nobody would buy that vehicle, had they known up front what was heading for them. To be fair on this, if you are that expert in court, and I have done this occasionally, irrespective of who is picking up your tab, you are required to be impartial and work in the interests of justice. There's a code of conduct and you have to sign it. It's a big deal if you breach it. So it's actually pretty hard to get away with being a bullshitter who's just sucking on the corporate flute in that role. But I hope Mr. Robert doesn't have any difficulty finding additional clients. Why did Jeep Shitsville just not simply make all of this go away before all of this unpleasantness was made so freaking public? Why not just pay off DH and hand him an NDA and gag him until the heat death of the universe would have saved a hell of a lot of incontinence pads heading to the landfill today. And that's just the tip of the advantages, I'd suggest. Nobody would buy that vehicle, said Jeep's expert, like, <laughs> Jesus. Stellantis Shitsville comports itself like an evil genius from a C-grade superhero movie, minus all of the charisma and any superpowers, prepared to perpetrate any evil to destroy your automotive world, even if it is they who also die in the process, which commercially is exactly what they are currently doing, based purely on the sales figures. More than 30,000 people bought a Jeep in Shitsville in 2014. They were on such a roll. But it's safe to say that most of those people did not buy a second one or a third. And I think pretty clearly things such as this judgment highlights the why. 
one was enough for most people to get that particular fantasy out of their system. And there is such a disconnection for so many people between the fantasy of Jeep ownership and the grim reality. Word has certainly got around, at least in Australia. Jeep is pretty clearly number one in number twos automotively for customer support down under. How would you even attempt to fix that commercially now? Like if they offered you the job, such a poison chalice. If you still want to buy a Jeep, I would argue A, Please don't. Your meds are not cutting it. And B, get professional help before it's way too late and you just see one out there parked in your driveway while you're on the phone leaving another message on Stellantis' voicemail hoping to beat DH's record of 31 goes.